Hello, coach. Good afternoon. So, guys, I'm with a interim coach of a super goals coach finish the job. So, let's just dive straight into it. Coach, at what point did you? I mean, growing up as every Nigerian child, we all want to play football, but we know all the wahala we went through as kids. You go out of the house, you probably get beaten and stuff like that. How much support did you get as a child deciding to play football? Was 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 the family always in tune with it, and did you always get support from your parents? Yeah, as a young kid, uh, we all play street football. Um, but you know, uh, your parents will always let you know that you have to face your education and uh, see how you can be better in, uh, in your studies. You know? So uh, along the line, joined my siblings uh, for training and because they were already um, football players with a small team, Nigerian Naji Football Club in Portacot. So I joined them for a, um, a session, I will put it that way, one weekend and uh, the coach liked me. And that was how everything started. So um, after that day, he, they invited me for another training session. I did well. And um, they gave me a contract while I was still at school. So. Um, that was how I knew it was going to be good, you know. Um, it's something that I wanted to do. Um, in my life, for example, we all have that moment when we decide that this is what we want to do. In my case, it's like photography. I decided to do photography and content creation. At what time in particular did you decide that it was football for me? Like, at what point was it football for Fini the George? Um, I think when I was... Um class four, they call it back then, class four. Uh, you know, doing my exams, um, I knew if I did well, definitely I'm getting to class five, which the next thing was Waek. And football was going so well. Uh, already moved from um, Ajip to NMPC Football Club, you know, so that was a, a bigger step. And um, I knew it was going well. And I, so, I liked it so much that I felt at that point in time, once I'm done with my class five, I will see what happens. You know? So when I was done with my class five, I knew this is for me. Because at that point in time, Sharks of Portacourt, were, they were knocking on my, my, my door to come and join them. So I think um, it was a bigger step every time and I knew that was for me. Coach, let's talk about the Super Eagles opportunity. Like walk me through getting that invite, that message that you should come and train with the Super Eagles that are invited to train with the team. Just walk me through the barrage of emotions that you went through at that moment. Um, it's, it's a long story, you know. Um, I think I was playing for Sharks of Portacourt. And um, I was doing so well as a young, young player and I was invited, I think by Paul and Melton. I think it's late now, uh, invited me. My first call up was 1989 to the Super Eagles. And um, I was still a kid. I got to Lagos, almost stranded, didn't know where to go to. <laughs> I was stuck at the bus, the bus stop, you know, like they, they normally say JJC, and Johnny just come. So I was there, they were calling my bus, I was going to Games Village in uh, through Lerry. And um, I was waiting for my bus, and um, you know these conductors, the way they pronounce uh, the bus stops and the, the areas, I was, I was standing there for I think 30 minutes. So at the point I had to ask somebody, where they said, oh, the next bus that is coming, you take that bus, you know. So um, it was um, a big story. Uh, first time being invited for the Super Eagles. Um, it was a great thing, and I think um, I enjoyed it, but I was, I was very young, and um, I couldn't cope. I'll put it that way, I couldn't cope. Uh, and um, I was just in camp training with them. And when Nigeria was knocked out of uh, the World Cup, Italia 90, I think we were beaten by Cameroon. 
and they disbanded the team and uh, everybody went back to their clubs. So thereafter, um, in, in 1990, I moved from Sharks to Rovers. And I think that was when they contracted uh, Clemens Westhoff. He came after the All Jazz 90. He invited me to camp, and um, that was how everything kicked off in uh, Super Eagles. Coach, you scored a lot of goals for Nigeria. You played a lot of games for Nigeria. But my question is, there's always that goal. There's that one goal that you call the most important goal of your national team career up to this point. What goal was that goal that you call your most important goal? Um, maybe I would say my, my first goal. Uh, we know the World Cup goal and other goals uh, were important, but that first goal was in my debut was was great after giving four assists and getting the last goal in that match against Burkina Faso was fantastic so I think that that always comes in my memory but you know the World Cup goal the 2000 uh, 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 goal against uh, Morocco also a beautiful one but um, I will go with the first one because that opened up everything for me Okay, coach, you've told us the goal that you consider most important, but yes. goals are graded also in terms of difficulties. What goal would you say is the best goal you scored in terms of difficulty, in terms of the technique, in terms of the thought process you had to go through to score this goal? What goal would you call your best goal for the Super Eagles of Nigeria? Um, I would say um, the best goal should be... Apart from my, my first goal, I think, um, in the World Cup 1994, I think, you know, playing at that, that big stage, um, having that moment, not knowing what to do, should I pass it, should I shoot, how do I do it? And um, all of a sudden, I had that, 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 uh, that great, great pause to think and say, okay, let me chip, let me take a chip, you know, and then um, it, it went over the keeper and um, yeah, became one of, uh, uh, one of uh, I would say, my iconic goals in, the, in, in World Cup, you know, so for me, it's, it's a great thing. Coach, you have played football at different levels, internationally, locally, you've played for different coaches, you've coached different sides, academy sides, um, um, eight grade sides, and now Ayimba, and now the Super Eagles. What would you say is your playing philosophy? How do you believe football should be played for you? Well, I believe in, um, you know, playing more offensive football, uh, try to keep the ball, sometimes, you defend properly by keeping the ball, you know. So instead of chasing to get it back, you keep possession, you know. So I've always liked the Dutch way, um, the Ajax way of playing. And um, yeah, that's um, what I try to do, you know. But, you know, football, uh, we try to, to modernize and um, change formation depending on the players you have. So. Um, but if you ask me, I like to play the wing, the wing football, the, the right uh, winger, left winger, and uh, support striker and supporting striker. You know, the normal uh, four-three-three formation. You know, so it's more offensive. Now, coach, when you came to Aimba a couple of years ago, I mean, Aimba was looking for a coach, and names were thrown into the fray. And I checked through, and I saw coach. Finidi George. Personally, I was surprised myself when I saw your name on the list of possible coaches for Ayimba. My question is, I mean, a lot of ex-players jump this stage. They don't want to come back into the MPFL to coach. So, coach, why did you come back to the MPFL to coach and why Ayimba International of Abba? Um, before Ayimba, I've been coaching um, under 15, under 19 in Mallorca, in Spain. And um, I was uh, looking at um, having a, a, a higher post, maybe assistant coach of the first team. That didn't happen. So and I, at the point, I was, I was losing in touch. 
I was losing in touch with my kids. You get me? They were growing up and I was busy traveling uh, with other kids as well. Under 15, my son was like, uh, I think 13, 14. I was traveling with under 15, 16, all over the place, playing games. And um, you sacrifice that for a few years and expecting to get an upgrade. And uh, when that didn't come, I, I had to, you know, I left. Uh, so I could have time with my kids as well. They were growing up as well. So I stopped coaching, uh, became a, a father. I would say, try to, try to do my job as a dad. Uh, at the point, I just felt, yeah, I'm not getting that opportunity in Europe. Why don't you come back? So I spoke with uh, Boboye. Um, spoke with Yema, um, they said, if you want to coach, you can come back, you know. Uh, so I was getting those inquiries from them, uh, getting the feedback from them, which are the clubs, if I decide to come, which are the clubs to come to, you know. So they gave me Aimba, they gave me Rivers United, Aqua United, I think maybe, I think Kanu Pillars or uh, Plateau United, that these are the clubs that are stable. Um, if you're looking at coming back, these are, the, these are the options, you know. So when the season, the season ended, that year that I came, 2021, the season ended, I spoke with Boboye again, and he told me, if you want to come, this is the best time. Aimba is looking for a new coach. Uh, call the sporting director and um, have a word with him and see what, what he can come up with. So um, that, that, that was what I did and then the rest is history. Coach, you came to Aimba, you won the league in your second season and you are in serious contention to repeat the same feat. There is a very serious fight this season. Now away from football, away from Aimba, away from the national team, let's talk about the struggle of football, you said something about um, the struggle about being away from your kids, still coaching other kids, and all of this. Let's talk about the toll that football has on footballers, coaches, players. I mean, young kids have to leave their families, train at far distances without family support, trying to be professionals. Coaches have to leave their families to coach people at great distances. Just walk us through the struggle, the emotional toll that football has on players, on coaches, and their families. All we see is the glamour on this side. Just talk me through the emotional toll that football has. Um, it takes a lot, it takes a lot. You know, emotionally it takes a lot because um, uh, young, young players suffer a lot. And it's not that all that glitters, you know. Uh, you go through a lot when you don't play well, uh, a lot of criticism and some of these young players cannot take that you know uh, mentally it's tough on them so it, it really is not easy it's not easy um, most people think uh, when you just you just come from nowhere and you you make it it doesn't work that way in football um, you have to go through that process that struggle sometimes coaches don't play you uh, you have to you have to get yourself up. Um, it takes a lot, you know. Uh, you need your parents. You need people that will encourage you. Will tell you, keep fighting. Your time will come. It's not easy. So, uh, being a footballer is a difficult one. Difficult because you have to compete, compete with a lot of a lot of kids, you know, for you to make it. And um, if you are lucky enough to make it. Um, you get that reward later, but um, the early stages is, is very, very tough, you know, for, for, young, for young kids, you know. So uh, um, if you're going into football, uh, you have to have patience um, and you have to be mentally tough because sometimes uh, no, uh, some kids cannot take no for an answer and uh, it, might, it might affect them mentally. So, coach, for all, this is a trivia question right now. For all the sets of super egos that you played with, I don't mean those that came before you 
or those that came after you, just the ones that you played with. Build your first 11 for the Super Eagles. Build your first 11 for the Super Eagles of all the teams that you played with. Uh, Peter Rufain goal. Um, Austin Aguavon. Right foot back. Um, Uchi Okechuku. Uh, Stephen Keshi. Uh, ben Roa on the left side, uh, Sunday Olise in the middle, uh, JJ Kocha, myself uh, on the left side, uh, Emmanuel Amunike, and Daniel Omokachi and um, Litz Rashidi Yekini. Coach, this is basically the end of this interview, but let's do this. Can you help me look at the camera and send a message to a young boy that wants to be like the next Fini the judge, that wants to play football? Just advise this young player on the way forward for this player. Um, yeah, for young, young lads, you have to be focused, work harder, um, be strong mentally and never give up. Because sometimes uh, when you're being rejected, um, you, you, you tend to forget about the football or the game. Uh, you should be, should be focused and uh, keep pushing till you get to your final destination. Thank you very much.